Praise the Lord. Good to have you guys on with us tonight on our live stream. This is our midweek service, and we're here to get into the Word of God. Not our opinions, but what does God say? So this is God's will for us. So we invite you guys tonight, wherever you are in the world, and uh, all of you that are on li uh, Daily Bread, uh, I saw a thing this morning. My wife was showing me like 40,000 on there, so it's good to have you guys, uh, whoever you are. Uh, checking out everything that's going on, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Again, all of these are wild people. They're radical for the Lord, you know. So they make a lot of noise, especially when light comes, all right. They get a beam of light, and they'll go like, oh, and, you know, and they just go off. So it's good to have you in the midst of uh, a great anointing, and so praise God for you. Thank you for your time tonight. We do enjoy you, but we do most seriously uh, understand that God's reaching out to you. This is my phone ringing. This is my phone ringing. My phone said something. The Holy Ghost calling me on my phone. Is this something going on here? Let me see here. Maybe he's got a word for y'all tonight. Yeah, turn your phone off. <laughs> turn your phone off. All right, my phone's off. So you guys turn your phone off. That's your word for tonight. All right, well, you guys wave at somebody and uh, take your seats. We're going to hop in this real quick. Uh, because this is something that uh, is most important for all of us. And uh, we want to make sure, darling, would you stick well? I'll just do this real quick. Just lay that by my bag there. All right. All right. Here we go. How many believers we got in the house? Yeah. Oh, I hear the sound over here, all. I don't know about you guys. How many, lead, how many believers we have in the house? Yeah. All right. Okay. So if you're a believer tonight, this is going to be most important for you because all of the works that you're doing there and all of the things that you say, think, all of your motives, all of your actions, all of your how you believe the word or receive the word of God, how you act on the word of God, uh, and many more things, all of those things are the things that you and I are set forth to meet Jesus at the Bema seat, uh, the seat, the judgment seat of Christ. And so what you're, what you're doing tonight is a part of, of uh, your works before the Lord God, and so it's good to to be here. It's good to make the effort, and it's good to have an open heart. For those of you that are joining us, hey, listen. Hey, listen. You're not there. You're not on this, on this live stream just because you don't have anything else to do tonight, okay? You're here because God's pecking at you, all right? You ever seen a chicken run a bug? He runs and he pecks at him <laughs> until he catches him. And God's been pecking at you for a long time, some of you, not all of you. But he's been pecking at some of you out there that's watching us for a long time. And guess what? Why don't you just stop running and just let him catch up to you, all right? Uh, because there's no place that you're going that he hasn't been. Uh, so why don't you just let him catch up with you and then uh, surrender to his uh, particular, I would say, his work that he wants you to be involved in because that's something that was ordained before you ever got here, all right? Uh, not something that your family told you to do, or your mama told you to do, or uncle so-and-so told you to do, but the things that God has for you, they come through your heart, not your head, all right? And so those things are very important for you because they lead up to that day that we all stand before the beamer seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about the things that we're doing tonight, this is uh, one of the first messages that I did on uh, Daily Bread. And it seemed uh, the first time that we did that, uh, a lot of people were on Daily Bread all over uh, to that particular subject. And so uh, I'm doing it again tonight for all of you and for those of you that may not have been on Daily Bread so that something that the Holy Spirit might say to you might cause a dynamic change in your uh, pathway that maybe you're on right now, maybe you need to take a break and, uh, and just check out your checkout so that you can line yourself up with the word of God because God's not going to go past his word for anything except in the place where you're obedient, you will find that he will pour out his will and his love on you and everything that he can to help you succeed in life. But if you're outside of that, okay, you have placed yourself, as I say uh, sometimes, and this is something that I, uh, I said I was going to write a book on. Let me read this real quick. All right. God knows if you disobey. He knows that if you disobey, you've decided for yourselves what is good 
and what is not good. He knows that when you disobey him, that you have already decided what's good or what's not good for you, okay? And so this is why I say this to you guys. In that place of obedience, you'll find God's love pouring in on you through Christ Jesus. But if you willingly step out or even try to say ignorantly, I didn't know, which is pretended ignorance, uh, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble by stepping outside of the will of God, okay? The Adam and Eve incident that you and I know about, Adam, Eve, and the serpent, uh, it says that when the Lord came to speak to them after they had sinned, and he spoke to Adam, and he spoke to Eve, but then it says that when he spoke to the snake, he took his arms and his feet from him because of what he did. All right? He took his arms and his feet. That's his mobility. And he told him that he would crawl on his breast for the rest of eternity. All right? So you and I have to be very careful about how we walk in or don't walk in the obedience of God, okay? Because he sees it all, and he knows your heart, and he understands where you are. But you have to be willing, as James said, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. You have to run to him. And in this subject that we're talking about tonight, as unto God, doing everything that we do as unto the Lord. It's most important that every Christian in, the whole, in this whole world get this, get this revelation that my life, everything that I do, I should work with the attitude, give with the attitude, service with the attitude, worship with the attitude. Everything is unto the Lord. See, right now, you that are believers, and I pray that all of you out there that accept the Lord Jesus Christ even tonight, you as a believer, you are a friend to the king. And being a friend to the king, you hear things that other people don't hear because you're close to him, okay? Now, if you're that close to him to hear things that other people don't hear, then we certainly should have uh, the expressive lifestyle of releasing that, what we've heard, to other people. We should be able to do that. And living unto the Lord God, doing everything that I can unto him as unto him. I mean, you know, no matter what you do, you give to the, the man that you see on the street corner. Uh, do it as unto the Lord, not as unto his demeanor, uh, how he's dressed or what he's carrying. Or maybe there's three. I saw three the other day in, a, in about a quarter of a mile up on Route 3. You know, guys out there with signs and, and asking people, you know, to help them. And I'm going like, the, well, they got more signs out here that, that we need help. You know, we need people to work. Then there are signs of you out there holding on the side of the street like we need money. There are people that need you to come work for them. And I'm going like, well, why aren't you trying to go somewhere to, you know, to at least put in an application and say, listen, I need a job. I'm out here on the street. You probably seen me out there on the road. You probably stopped and gave me money. Listen, I need Where's the dignity that we have, that we should have, you know, as, a, as a, the image of God, all right? Not, not as a, a man or woman or this or that, but as the image of God. We are made in the image of God, okay? And one day, angels will even be disallowed by our image. So, so where's the power that we should be walking in? We walk in it when we do everything as unto the Lord, okay? Because then we know that our our confidence might be in how, how we did something and we succeeded in doing this, but we should always understand that our weaknesses tell us that we need him every day. And in everything we do, we need him. We need him for the resources. We need him even to worship him and praise him in truth, spirit and truth. We need the Lord to do that, okay? Because there are other people all over the world that don't do that. They say they're worshiping God, but who is our God? Could be a calf, could be a banana. You know, who is our God? The Buddhists? You know, the Masons, the Eastern Stars, who, who, who is their God to them, you know? And we got a, people doing every kind of thing except saying, doing exactly what God says do. Follow the word of God, worship me in spirit and in truth. And he says, and if you dwell in the land and do good, he says, you can feed on my faithfulness. In other words, I'll be faithful to you no matter what you do. And that's where, and that's where we want to be, doing everything as unto the Lord, okay? So let's go with me to Ephesians tonight. And there are a couple of things that we need to look at when it comes to some of the things. And, I, you know, we can't cover all of this, but I'm doing this. I couldn't cover it all in eight minutes on that daily bread thing. But there's some things that we can cover. And then there's some things that when you are 
grabbing what you're, what you're taking in, the Holy Spirit can give you other areas to cover because you started on a certain subject. So he will increase your faith in those particular subjects. In Ephesians chapter 6, all right? Ephesians chapter 6, and this is talking about children, fathers, you know, everybody really. He says in verse, set, in verse 5, he says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling and singleness of, of your heart as unto, the, unto Christ. All right? Then he says this, Not with me, eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the what? From the what? The heart. If I'm doing it from the heart, I'm not doing it from the eyes. All right? If I'm doing it from the heart, I'm not doing it from the eyes. I'm doing it from my heart. Okay? As unto the Lord. He says, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Okay? Knowing that whatever good thing any man doeth, the same he shall receive of the Lord, whether he be born or free. All right? So he's letting us know that uh, as we do things unto the Lord, we should not spend time looking for uh, men to to give us accolades, to give us all kinds of, of you know, uh, awards and things. Those things are good. It's good to tell somebody you did this. It's good to help somebody to know, I appreciate what you did. He's not telling us to kick those things out. But what he's telling us is not to do stuff for those things. All right? Not to do those things so somebody can come and pat you on your back so that your head can get so big that nobody can get it through the door. He's, he's saying, do things as unto the Lord, and the reason he's saying these things is because when you and I face the Lord Jesus Christ, and some people don't, you know, they think that, well, you know, I'm just going to die and go on to glory, and because I belong to the Lord, everything's going to be fine. Well, see, you have to understand, everything you do, you're going to be judged for. And, 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 and I may do this next week, or I may do it this week, whenever. But everything that you do, you're going to be judged for. it. Even how you sit and receive the word, you're going to be judged for how you receive the word. You're going to be judged for how you use what you received. Okay, everything that we do, we're going to be judged for. It. But the thing is, you want to do such a, a great work, and it can be a little thing. Remember what Jesus said? He told those, those ones that have been faithful over the, over the monies, the, the things that he's given them to invest. He says, you've been faithful over a few things. Well, he's watching the few things that you do, not the whole lot of things. He's even watching the few things. And it, it even goes to the point, he says, if you even give a, a cup of cold water. So he's, he's watching you according to everything you do, not just some things, okay? Now, the purpose for Jesus giving us those revelations is to let us know that when you get to glory, there are crowns that are going to be given to us, okay? Those crowns are evidences of you what you did for the Lord while you were living on the earth, okay? But there's another significance to those crowns, all right? When we get to glory, those crowns will be the only thing that you'll have to offer God. They'll be the only thing that you'll say. This is why it says in the book of Revelation, chapter 4 or 5, it says that the elders threw their crowns to Jesus' feet. They gave him an offering of what he gave to them. See, without him, they couldn't have received the crown. And so they take what he gave them and they bring it back and worship him and let him know, it's because of you that I have this crown. You're the one who deserves it. That's the only thing that you're going to have to be able to give God when you get to glory. So what if it's, what's, what goes on if you don't have one? You know, what goes on then? If you say, I have nothing that represents that I live for you on the earth. How will you feel then? See, and I'm going to get into a whole lot more details and give you a whole lot of scriptures, but this is why I'm saying unto the Lord, what I do unto the Lord. You know, some people can't understand that, that everything that you do, you're just supposed to do it unto the Lord, not unto men to be, you know, for men to please you and for people to say, oh, well, you know, Pastor, I love that word you gave because you always give a right word. You know, well, sometimes a pastor needs to give a right word to the wrong person. The, <laughs> the right word to a wrong person is simply somebody that's thinking wrong, all right? And give them a right word so that you can bring them back over if they want to, to a place of where they need to be, okay? And this is what all of us should be following in. Every word that we do, that we speak out, Jesus said, men shall give an account for, 
Every thought that you think is a word to God, okay? Because you are originally a word yourself from God, okay? So everything that we do, we, we need to follow suit and do it as unto the Lord, okay? Now, come on, go with me to Psalms uh, 23. This is not a, a funeral psalm, all right? 23, this is not a funeral psalm. You guys here with me? Yeah. All right, this is not a funeral psalm. All right, we'll get a little while in a minute, but this is not a funeral song, okay? All right. Now, in Psalm 23, this is David, and he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is verse 1. So he's bringing us into the attitude, or should I say, the picture thoughts that he has of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. When you look up the word shepherd, it simply means my best friend. All right? The Lord is my best friend. All right? I got a lot of friends, but the Lord is my best friend. All right? So if I am going to work for the Lord, I need to understand that I'm working for my best friend. When I, when I share things about him, I'm talking about my Come on, y'all got that. Y'all gonna get that, okay? You know, when I sing about the Lord, I'm singing about who? My best, my best friend, okay? The Lord is my shepherd, my best friend, and because he's my best friend, I don't want. Because you know how your best friend is. Your best natural friend will try to do everything that they can to, to, to help you along or to do certain things. That's your best natural friend. Well, Jesus is your best royal friend, okay? He's our royal friend. And as our royal friend, our royal friend, he establishes certain things in our life because he is the trustee of all the resources of glory. So he's my best friend, all right? And David knew that the Lord was his best friend, okay? Why do you know somebody is your best friend? Because when you can go through stuff and then your best friend shows up, and helps you to become victorious, then you can understand that is my best friend, all right? So we go to Psalms 32, all right? Psalms 32. In Psalms 32, okay, you guys there, I'll wait for you guys out there to get to it. Okay, as unto the Lord, okay, as unto the Lord. Not unto to men, for men to, you know, pat you on your back and, tell you how great you were and you know and, and guess what there's no e eternal war reward there it's, it's sort of like some of the mixed up grace messages that we have today that tell people all right in the when we first got born again everybody's born again when we first got born again we got born again by the grace of God it says that God gave us grace all right that we could get that we could receive okay Grace, which is unmerited favor. Jesus came. Jesus is God's grace and truth. So God gave us his unmerited favor so that we could get born again. So he gave us Jesus, okay? So he gave us his favor, undeserved. We did not deserve it. When you read John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you'll look around and say, what in the world, in this world, did God love that he gave his son? All right, so, so we go to the point where we know that it was his, his unmerited favor or the, the, our undeserved favor that caused us to have Jesus that we could accept the righteousness of God and now we became, because we accepted him, we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, right? Okay, that is grace for salvation, okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. That is grace for salvation, okay? But the grace that you and I live under after we receive that grace for salvation is the grace that causes us now to live a righteous life. Not do everything you want to do and say, well, the Lord is okay with it. No, that's wrong. That's a, that's a, mis, that's a misled teaching, okay? Because Jesus never sins. So if he's given us himself, then how can we say we have him and we still commit sin habitually, all right? So we have to separate this, the grace that we got born again with from the grace that we should live by. 
And some people are trying to put the grace that we got born again by in the place of the grace that we ought to live now, okay? Because God did accept you when you came to him in all the mess that you were. How many of you know that you were just like Lazarus? You were stone cold dead and you stunk. You were a mess, all right? You were stone cold dead and you stunk and when he spoke to you, guess what happened? His grace to save you came. And that grace that he saved you, it got you out of that mess that you were in. But now there's a grace that you live by, which causes us now to live as he is, so are we in this world. So you got to watch those grace messages that's telling you that you can do everything you want to do, and the Lord's okay. No, as unto the Lord, now because I am born again, I live unto the Lord. Okay? I live unto the Lord. And why, how do I live unto the Lord? By studying what he says. By following the manual, just like in your car. When you bought your car, there's a little book inside the dashboard somewhere, okay? Or maybe you gotta go online and download it. But there's a manual now that tells you that this is how your car should operate. And if there's a malfunction, you can look on the page and read it and it tells you this is what's going on. You see that little light coming on there? Guess what, you better go get a check. It says engine check, engine check, something's going on. Fuses are blown, things aren't lined up, something ain't right. Go check. Well, you'll read that, but you won't read this. This tells us how to, when that light comes on, go fix it. You don't have long to fix it. Holy Spirit will give you a little bit of time to get yourself straight when he brings, guess what? Conviction. All right? This is David. In Psalms 32, blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silent, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of the summer. Selah, it means just pause right there and think about where David is, okay? Now this is a psalm, again, please get this. This is a psalm that David wrote after he had his best soldier killed, his most loyal soldier killed, Uriah, all right, who would not go home to sleep with his wife because his men were sleeping out there, who would not go and do certain things until he knew that his order was up. This is after he killed his greatest soldier, okay, and committed adultery with the man's wife. This is what he's writing, what he went through, okay? What he went through, and he's bringing us to the place where you're gonna have to know that everything I should have did, I should have did it unto the Lord. I shouldn't have did this thing with this man. I killed him and slept with his wife and tried to cover up the pregnancy, and now guess what? I had to go and do all these things. And you will read through this, and you will see that David is talking about sin, he's talking about rebellion, and he's talking about, guess what, corruption. All right, that's what he's talking about. He used the Hebrew words to tell you and I that there are three things that you and I have to really stay away from. Sin is falling away. Rebellion is, is defying authority. And corruption is twisting the things that are right or the right stature so that they will work for you. And so when we talk about living for the Lord, we can't get away from what sin will do for us. We can't get away from what rebellion will do. And we can't get away from what our corrupt minds will do. Okay, because some people think that, guess what? Well, you know, I sinned and I did this and, you know, the Lord's going to forgive me and whatever. Yes, he will. But if you continue in it, then you can continue to the point that you can continue your way right on away from God. Okay, don't, don't play with this. This is not, just because your friends that have gotten away with it don't mean you're going to get away with it. Because you may not have the seasons of life that they have appointed to them. Psalms 139 tells us that the, the, the book of life or the book of the living, it tells us that our days, our numbers, everything God put in those things, he put everything about your life in that book, okay? Everybody's got a name in that book, or, every, or should I say everybody's got a life in that book, and your daddy named you, your mama named you, grandma named you, everybody, somebody named somebody. You got a name? What's your name? Your name's Mike. Your name is, guess what? Your name might be Jimmy. Your name might be whatever. That's the name that your natural parents have given you. Amen? Amen? 
But the Bible says that in the day that you and I have fully been redeemed, the Lord will give us a new name. See, he will give us a spiritual name that's not like the name that you have now. See, so you and I have to make sure that we do things unto the Lord so that we can get our new name. You don't want to go and still have your old name because you might miss the first resurrection. And David said, the sin that I've committed, Lord, thank you that you've forgiven me. The rebellion against your authority, Lord, thank you. And then he says, the corruption. I have taken right statutes and, and, and perverted them into tragedy for not just me, but for my family. See, you got to watch how you are as a father, what you do with your children. Because when you sin against God, okay, Look at Adam. Look at what you and I have gone through because of Adam. We're the children of Adam. Not anymore. We were the children of Adam. Now we are the children of Jesus Christ. The second Adam. The Bible says we, he's the last Adam. And because he's the last Adam, what he has done is done away with the old Adam. So the old race is done away with, and God now has a new race that is being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. This is who you and I are as believers. And this is why we come from the old Adam's life and we come into the new Adam's life, into Christ's life, so that we can be indwelt by the Spirit of God, which Adam did not have to indwell in him because he fell once he gave that up. You and I were born after he fell. You should read some of the old, the old, the old Eastern transcripts of Adam's, of, of Moses' writings about, about how, what happened there and how Adam and how Eve was talking to each other and how Adam, when he was going to die, how he told Eve to tell our children how this took place. Tell them how wicked you were, you turned against God. Adam told his wife that. And she begged God to let me be buried with Adam because we were one in the garden, we were one in the sin, and I do not want to live without him. I want to be one with him, even in his burial. There's some stuff that has been hid from us, and people just go to church and say, oh, I can just do what I want to do. And you don't understand God at all. See, this is why the Bible tells us to, to search out the scriptures, be like the Bereans, find out what God tells us, and then run after it. Draw near to God and let him draw near to you because you're drawing near to God. See, you, you, we can't just do everything we want to do. We have to think about the, the consequences of what I do. And if I do it unto the Lord, I mean, I look at these kids that come here and sacrifice at the school, you know, and they got the kids and everybody's trying to do this and we're running around doing everything and they're cleaning and they're working and you got to teach and all this, you know, and you got all this stuff that you got to do. And all the time, the Lord is going like, but you're doing that for somebody else. You're doing it for me, for somebody else, so that they can learn how to do this. You're putting yourself out so that somebody else can come in. See, do you, can, can, can you imagine what sacrifice does for you? When you, when you say, I'm just going to forget all about me. I'm doing this as unto the Lord, you know? Come here, little boy. I'm going to wipe your snotty nose. Some people go like, you need to go to the bathroom. Whatever. You know, whatever. I probably would tell them to. Go blow your nose or something, you know. But some people have that mercy that they'll take that little child and say, come here and let me clean your nose and wipe your nose and whatever. And God's looking at all of that because your heart is, I'm doing it under him. Yes. When I take these hands that he gave me and I bring service to some little child, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Whatever you're doing, you're passing out, you know, whatever you guys pass out, flowers or whatever when people come in or, you know, you're giving them cards or whatever. God's looking at everything you set your hands to do because you're doing it as under him. I look at the guys in the parking lot, you know, cold, heat, rain, whatever. We may look at it and don't even think about it, but the Lord is looking at it like, wow, they're standing on the parking lot in the heat like that. And they're waiting for people to come in so that people's cars can be parked, people can get out and walk in, and they know that their car was parked in a safe manner, and they're watching this. And we sometimes, we miss out on all of those blessings that are all around us from the highway to the woods every time we come. And you see people come, 
You know, sometimes I'll be on the stage when Pastor Milton is, is ministering, and I'll be looking at the highway, and I'll be going like, Lord, is it time? Because we're here. And I know he always keeps a remnant of people. See, is, is it time, Lord? Where are they? They're in the hedges and the highways. Can they hear us? Will you go and tell them? See, this is, a, this is a, a thing that we do as unto the Lord. And David found out through, his, through all of the pain that he went through that, you know something, Lord, I didn't do that unto you. I did that unto the flesh. I killed a man in the flesh. I, didn't, I slept with his wife in the flesh. And, and you know, later on, you know, in, in the, before he wrote this, Nathan came to him and told him, said, there was a man a traveler came to this guy and he killed his killed his neighbor's lamb and whatever you know and it was always he was only talking about the evil disposition that came and worked in that man's play, in, in that man's life to so at first he was a traveler then he became a guest and then he became guess what he became the master and he convinced that guy to do that evil and David said I, he ought to die and Nathan said you're the man you're the man and David didn't jump up and down and say, don't you know I'm the king? I'm equal with you. I can hear from God for myself. But you know, he didn't say that. He said, I've sinned against the Lord. I'm the one guilty. Why? Because when we are living unto the Lord and when we're doing things unto the Lord, guess what we do? We listen to the word of God. See, you may not like my presentation. You may not like the way I dress. You may not like what I drive. You may not like anything about me. But when the word of God comes off these pages and they come to you, you have to address the respect of the word of God. Because in doing that, you're receiving the one who sent me to tell you this. Are you, are you guys with me? It's to say, come on, go with me to the book of Matthew. Please. Matthew chapter 10. As unto the Lord. Everything that I do. We're going to be judged by how we receive the word of God. I don't want to hear about no prosperity. And God is saying, but I'm the God of increase. Why don't you want to hear about me? I'm your best friend. You know, I'm your best friend. Why don't you want to hear about me? Why don't you want to change that, that short life you're living? Listen to Perry Mason. He's talking to you. You know how Perry Mason is? Perry Mason can come at your heart that he can pull out some confessions, boy. You know, you, you need to watch him. He goes straight to a person's heart. You know, he don't play all those games like Burger do. We got evidence about this and we got evidence. Perry Mason gets there and he speaks to the person directly to that person's heart so that he can draw out what's in that person's heart. That's why, guess what? You couldn't find Burger winning anything on TV. Or Burgess or whatever his name. I used to call him Burger, you know. In, in Matthew chapter 10, you guys there? See, it's most important. Everything we do, let's do it unto the Lord. Like Nate just sneezed just now. He did it unto the Lord. He's in the Lord's house. He said, Lord, take these germs and flow them over there somewhere or whatever. I'm doing this as unto you. I'm in your house. Guess what, Lord? I'm a friend of the king. <laughs> That's what you do. You got to see some people are so starchy with God that they can't even get to the Lord because they're so froze up. You never like that with your children. Your children come to you and they say, Daddy, this and what and whatever. Your heart goes all out. <laughs> Daddy, please take me. Oh, yes, come here. Come here. Let me hold. All they got to do is say, oh, you got them up in your arms. <laughs> well, why do you think God's any less caring for us? You know? No, he loves you. It says this. Again, God knows if we disobey that we have chosen to say, I know what's best for me. And I know what's wrong for me when we disobey. It says this in verse, oh, verse 33, chapter 10. We'll start here. He says, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. So you, won't, you don't want to be on that side. Then he says this. He says, think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, 
and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. All right? This is talking about family, your closest relationships in the household. Okay? Then, guess what he does? He talks about the church. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake, you need to underline that, as unto the Lord. See, he's talking to the church here. As unto the Lord, he says, shall find it. So if you lose your life for the Lord, you shall find it. He's talking to the church. He that receiveth you receiveth me. How do we receive the person? By what they say. See, he's talking about church here. By what they say. When people come in, they may be visitors or maybe they've been here 15, 20 times. Maybe they got a special parking lot, but they never join. Well, I mean parking spot, but they never join. Whatever. They come in, they say certain things. There's a certain language in the kingdom. Hey, bless you. Man, I'm a man of faith. You know, you know, we, we speak the, the kingdom lingo, but you have to identify with that kingdom lingo. Is it coming from the word that's in that person's heart? Or is it just something they're just saying because it's something that's said in the crowd? You know, when you go to concerts, worldly concerts, what do everybody do? They do everything that everybody else is doing. If people are jumping up and down, they're jumping up and down. If they're waving their hands, they're waving their hands. If they're screaming and yelling, they're screaming and yelling. Everybody's doing the same thing. Why? Because in an atmosphere, there's a certain lingo that's there that everybody seems to conform to. Well, when you come into the house of God, then guess what? There's a certain word that I've received all week long. That's because I'm spending time with him. There's a certain word, there's certain words that I receive that go inside my heart. And when they go inside my heart, those words that I bring inside my heart, those are the words that give me the ability to discern what's going on on the outside of me. See, and you don't have to run and pray about it because you know about it. Because it's already inside of you. You have already planted the word of God inside of you. So when you hear people talking about prosperity and you've already, you know, you already got that inside of you. When you hear people talking about healing, you already got that inside of you. Then guess what? You can discern the spirit of that house. You can discern what that person is doing. You can identify exactly what's happening or what's coming out of that person's mouth. You can do that because of the word that's alive in you. It understands and there's nothing that, that, that can be covered or hid from the word of God. So you understand it, okay? He says this, he that receiveth you receiveth me. He that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. And he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. What is he saying? It's the word. If, if I stand here and say, and this has happened over and over, you just saw the young man the other, other last Sunday stood up, and, uh, and he said this when I, he had said, he had, you know, he's not a church, he's not a member here. He, he used to come every now and then, I used to see him, and he used to always tell me when he met me, he says, every time I come here, the Lord bless me. And I said, well, it seemed like to me you'd pack your bags up and move. You know, that was, that was a long time ago. You know, but his mother passed, and, and so he had sent, sent me a message that, guess what, you know, he needed to talk, and he was going through this and all that, so I decided to call him on Thanksgiving Day, and I called him Thanksgiving Day, and he was so shocked. He says, you're taking time to call me on Thanksgiving Day? I said, it's the day that the Lord made. You know, and he says, well, everybody used to be with the families and whatever. I said, I am. See, people don't understand. You're the image of God. As a believer, you're the image of God. You're made in God's image. So guess what? You're a part of me and I'm a part of you because we are all are a part of God's forever family. And so I told him, I said, you know, he told me his story. I listened to everything, you know, because sometimes it's good to listen to people. Let them pour that out so you can put something else in. And he, and he poured it out. And then after he poured it out, I told him, I said, now I want you to hear me. I said, I am not your mother. I said, but I do know how to pray. And I said, so you listen to me when I pray. We're coming into agreement right now. And he says, God changed that thing and gave him a job the next day. You know? And ever since then, guess what he does? He tithes every other week. He gets paid every other week. He tithes to this house every other week. 
He's very grateful for what God did. What happened when I spoke to him? He received me who God sent. He received me. When he received me, he received the words that I prayed over him. When he received those words, he got the reward of those words. See, he got the reward of those words that I spoke to him. This is how, this is why it's so important to know your anointing, to protect your anointing, to respect and honor your anointing because the words that come out of that anointing, those are the words that you catch. And those are the words that, guess what, formulate things around your life. I've seen it happen so many times since we started this ministry. People, I'll be saying something to one person. One day, it was a long line up here. And a lady over this side stuck her hand up and caught somebody else's blessing. And she got a brand new job, and then she came back and told us. She says, when I heard you talking about them, I took it as my own. Got a brand new job, you know, better job, increase and whatever. Well, that's the way God is. He's always going to give you better than your ax anyway. He's just like that, okay? And so we get into these things. And then, now that was for the church. And then he says this. Whosoever shall give, the, give to drink one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, truly I say unto you that he shall receive, he shall in no wise lose his reward. You know, this is a service that we do. See, outside of the church, doing things, even in the church. But this, is, this part right here represents service. What I take from myself and give it to someone else. And he's saying, when you receive or when you do these things, there is a reward for these things. And some people don't, don't even think about the rewards of glory. All they think about is, you know, well, it cost me so much. You ever had somebody ask you this when you buy something? How much did that set you back? You ever heard that old crazy stuff? I wouldn't have bought it if I wanted it to set me back. Nobody goes to buy something to, purposefully to set them back. How much did that cost you, you know? I'm going like, what are you talking about? See, see, our minds, if you live unto the Lord, faith sees things that are beyond you. And faith is what God gave us to bring those things into our life, okay? Now, now I'm going to say this to you. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, okay? Now, we know that grace is, is, is undeserved by us but it was God's unmerited favor to us, okay? Truth came also with that grace, okay? See, see this is what you got to get. So the favor of God came through Jesus to give us what we didn't deserve. And the truth reveals to us what we didn't deserve. Faith helps us to pull what we didn't deserve into our life because truth gave it to us, all right? Again, the faith that we have in who Jesus is. This is why his name is so important and so powerful to us. And instead of calling your banker first, you need to call him. Yes. You know, don't call your doctor first. You know, write down Jesus' name and put it on your body. Put it in your shoes or put it under your bed, you know, whatever you got to do. You know, write his name down and say, Lord, Lord, I'm doing this unto you. I'm your friend. I grabbed communion, and I said, Lord, I'm remembering you. You are God's favor to me, and you're God's truth to me. And I, don't, I didn't deserve the grace, so I know I didn't deserve the truth. But you have revealed it to me. And because you have revealed it to me now, and I put the two together, the grace from Jesus Christ, Living righteous, so I'm going to live righteous so that the truth that he speaks to me, I can now obtain those things because they are called promises. And so I reach for those promises through the grace and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, this is how you get healed. This is how you get more finances in your house. This is how you make things happen and you bring seasons into your life that you know that I'm doing this unto you, Lord, because guess what? I couldn't have done this by myself. I don't have any grace for this. I don't have any, I don't have any truth about this. You know everything. So guess what? When I come to you, I come to you based on you, my friend. You, you made yourself my friend. You told me through the king who was your daddy, all right, David, that you are the Lord, my shepherd. So guess what? Through your daddy, the lineage has come down to guess what? I may be David's grandson. <laughs> but I'm God's son. All right? Because David was the one who received the revelation. 
thousands of years before that God wanted everybody to worship him in spirit and in truth, to know who he is, to trust him, to do it unto the Lord. So when we built this house, and when I say built this house, I'm talking about, you know, the, the idea that came from the Lord there can be. It's all based on wanting people to come out of their past and all of the stuff that, you know, you lived in your past, you didn't like it. I don't know about you, but I didn't like mine. All right? There wasn't a, there wasn't a day back then that I didn't enjoy it, but after I got out of it, I found out how bad it was. Y'all don't understand that, do you? All right? So you come out of that life, you didn't like that old life, and the more you look back at it now, you've realized how crazy you were. You know? You were like a frog, you know, wrapped up in wax paper and didn't know where to go. It's, it's, it's so refreshing to see how far God brought you. And if I look back in my past, and you can too, only momentarily. I don't need a chain to come pull all y'all back into the church tonight. But only momentarily, if you look back, you'll see how devastating it was to live without God. You didn't know how much danger you were in when you lived without God. You, you didn't know. Nobody knows until, until their eyes are open. You don't know how, how dangerous all the situations. And sometimes when you were a sinner, God kept you. All right? Don't fool yourself. You ain't no goody two shoe. God kept you when you were in your worst place. You were going through a, a thunderstorm that didn't have rain. All it had was wind. And it was blowing you everywhere. You were doing all kinds of things, and you had no idea of how dangerous it was. And now that we are born again, this is why we do everything unto the Lord. What are we doing? We're showing our appreciation. Lord, I'm letting you know I am thankful. I am so grateful. I won't disrespect you. I won't have no arrogance. I will whatever, because I know that if it was not for you, I would not be here. So write this down, Proverbs chapter 20. As unto the Lord. We got a few minutes. This is Proverbs chapter 20. I'm going to turn to it real quick because it bears working on. Verse 5. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Are you guys with me? A man of understanding, all right? You have to be able to discern the intentions of people in this world around you. All right? You and I, and again, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. I'm not walking around looking for people who I may think that they're out to get me. But what I do is depend on the word inside me to share with me the intentions of people that I do meet. Okay? Okay? See, this is, this is why it's not a, well, I'm guessing about this. No, you know when someone is speaking wrong. Because guess what? The word in you always agrees with the word of God. <laughs> oh, you guys with me? See, the word that's in you always agrees with the word of God. If, if you've studied and you've gotten it in your heart, it's going to always agree with what God is saying. So, so when you hear somebody saying something else, the first thing that the word does is brings up the intention of the person speaking. And you'll be going like, well, how do I know what they, you know, I just know something's wrong. It's because the word in you is telling you that there's something in the intention of that person you're talking to that ain't right. You know, look at your neighbor, it might be your spouse, and just tell them, say, this is why I understand you. <laughs> just tell them, that this is why I understand you, all right? All right? In 2 Samuel, and you can read this 
on your own because we don't have all night for this. Um, but in 2 Samuel chapter 15, all right, verse 2 through 10, you'll see that this happened. All right? And this is why I'm saying being able to discern the intentions of people around you because you need to discern the intentions of everybody in your life. All right? Not just be so open that everybody around you, you just all, oh, because we go to the same church or we work on the same job or we in the same hobby or, you know, we, we, we go to the same things all the time. I see them at the state and we go, no, 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 no. Because people have the opportunity to steal your crown from you. All right? Because God warned us not to let someone else steal your crown. See, that crown could be the only crown you're going to get. This is the day when, here's a story that backs up that scripture that I just gave you. Absalom approached David and he asked to travel to Hebron to worship and to fulfill a vow, but it was a lie. All right, this is Absalom, all right? He told David, I want to go to Hebron and worship and fulfill a vow, but that was not in his heart. What he did was he went there and he set himself up as king. <laughs> All right? Now, his daddy is king, but he lies to his father and his father can't pick it up. He couldn't discern the intention that he had. And so he went to Hebron and he, and he, 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 he set himself up to be king. Right? This is why it's so important, again, to discern what's going on around you, the people. And see, when, and as we do the Word of God and as you study the Word of God, never think that your time in the Word is wasted. And never think your time given to God is wasted. Because I've seen people that work for God and then go, well, you know, God won't pay me enough. And they go out into the secular world. And they think that, well, the secular world, you know, they're paying me better. than Now, some people have to work in the secular world. I've been out there, I understand. Most of us start in the secular world. But those who get the opportunity to work in the labor with God and to be able to do things with God, and then they choose the secular world over God. That's what I'm talking about. Because there ain't no benefit in working for God. Let me tell you something. The greatest benefit in the world is to be able to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ one day and those golden burning eyes look at you, boy, and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Did you have to go through a whole lot? Probably. Did you have to fight off enemies? Probably. But what did you do? You had commitment to God. That what I'm doing, I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Everybody don't sacrifice. I've seen people that's been in this church in the past, and they come and they go. They don't sacrifice. They come for certain things. People come for certain things in church. They come for notoriety. They come to find a spouse. They come, you know, because they hear you can get a blessing over here, and they come, they want a blessing. Or they come, they want to be delivered, you know, because they got to go to court Monday, and they want the judge to give them favor. I've seen people come in here for all kinds of things. They come because they want, you know, they want you to help them, and then you don't see them anymore. And they come all kinds of things. But God is looking at people because he says this, my eyes run to and fro. I'm looking for somebody. See, I'm looking for somebody whose heart, see, is toward me. You're going to do, you're going to live unto the Lord. See, and that's still going on. He, he's, he's not stopped. That's perpetual, all right? We look at Darius, and we're talking about being able to discern, okay? Because it's one of the things that the Word of God does for you. It gives you the ability to discern. Something ain't right about this person. Something ain't right about what they're saying. Something is just not right. Why is that going on? It's because the word in you knows everything. Nothing is hid from the word. Nothing is hid from the word. All right? Darius did this. This is in Daniel chapter 6. All right? You can read this verse 4 through 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, where those other men were jealous of Daniel, and they made up this certain thing without Daniel knowing about it. Okay? And then guess what? They presented it to the king. And they said, King, you know, and the king signed it. Guess what? Without discerning the intentions of their hearts, he signed it. And then he had to end up throwing Daniel in the lion's den. But what happened? God bought him out. Bought him out. Who got thrown in? The ones who had the evil intentions. 
See, just like with Absalom. What happened to Absalom? Says a tree grabbed him around his head. A tree grabbed him. A tree grabbed him. You got to read. You got to read these things in the Word of God. A tree grabbed him. All right. It was probably one of the same trees that when David was fighting the Philistines and God told him, said, go stand over there and wait for him. And when you hear the marching in the mulberry tree, then go forward. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Says the tree grabbed Absalom, held him by his hair. Now, if he's a fighter or anything, he at least had a sword on him. He could have cut his hair off and got out of the tree. Says the tree held on to him. I told you God took the legs and the arms off of the snake. He made a jackass speak. He made the sun stand still and the dial went back until now we're dealing with the last moments of that dial. Of that day. Change time. All right? So don't put it past God to do anything you need in your life. He says in Ephesians 3.20 that he can do... Oh, y'all got it. All that you could ask or even think about. He can do above all of that. All right? That's right. And what power is working in you? Better be the word. Better be the word. Hmm? Then there were the wise men. I'm just giving you these to help you to understand why it's so important to be able to discern or put the word in you as unto the Lord. You got to give God time to work on you. Don't you know that even though the Holy Spirit is sanctifying you all the time, that he's not going to get all of the old Adam out of you? Do you realize that? How many people around you that have passed over the years that you've known that were holy men, that they still had some things in them that they were doing that were still fleshly things? Even your thoughts. The Holy Spirit didn't sanctify you, and guess what? He can't stop all those thoughts that come at you all the time. You can cast them down, but they still come, do they not? <laughs> are you guys with me? See, there are some things that are not going to be fulfilled until you and I step into the resurrection. See? Some things are not going to be done completely in us until we step into the resurrection. All right? Again. Hmm. But the wise men, did they not, could they not interpret the times? They knew that a king had been born. Are you guys with me? Come on, talk to me now. They knew that a king had been born. They had, they had put themselves together in the caravans, and they had traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles because they were looking for the king whose star was there, was a, was a, a miraculous star that represented the birth of Jesus. But what happened with them and Herod? They could not discern Herod's heart. Because Herod told them, he says, when y'all go find him, Come back and let me know, because I want to go visit the boy. And who had to intervene? God had to intervene and tell them, nope. They did not discern it. See, because again, like the Gibeonites with, with Joshua, Joshua was looking at how they presented themselves and not their hearts. Joshua didn't go to God and say, Lord, you know something? I see this outward appearance, but what's going on on the inside there? because I don't know these people. He didn't do that. He went on and said, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a covenant with you and not come in here and whatever. And it was totally against God's will. But he did not discern. See, he couldn't identify what was going on inside. And this is why God had told him, meditate on my word day and night. See, stay in that word day and night that you may make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. Stay in there. Meditate on it all the time so that it can be inside of you, so that it can tell you or identify what's going on around you. Sure, we have the Holy Spirit, but he uses what you have. He don't give you something you don't have. Well, I don't need the word. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> you need the word and some more. And so we, we look at those three examples. I got I to... Gotta, 
close up because it's, it's late. So I thank you guys for viewing with us tonight, uh, you know, because I start talking and teaching and, you know, bringing out these things and they just keep coming. We thank you for your focused attention on the Word of God. And we pray that as you're learning and connecting to the spiritual things of Almighty God, that your great life will become greater, your faith will be increased. And guess what? When you go through a tough time, release those liquid words from your eyes. You know those tears you shared about some hurt, some lack, some need? They're liquid words. Release them so that God can put them in a bottle and keep them. So that there be a memorial set before him of how you thought about God and you, how, how much you wanted to do what God wanted you to do. And then allow the Lord God, as he says in the book of Revelation, to wipe all eyes. Because he is the Lord, our shepherd. He is my best friend. He's yours. Amen? We'll see you on our next broadcast. In Jesus' name, have a blessed night. Hallelujah.